One of the great things about writing with Keith Stegall is he never lets me get into my comfort zone. He's always doing things on purpose to trip me up. It's almost like method acting, where the director will say something to the actor to throw him off his or her game so that they can step into a deeper emotional vehicle. So um, one day I went to write with Keith. He brought a, another writer in on the session, a lyricist. Her name is Smith C. Dawn. And I got very upset. I said, Keith, why are you doing this? You know, you know that I can write lyrics by myself. I've written songs by myself that have been hits. You've written songs that have been hits. We've written songs together that are hits. He just said, ah, I just want to shake things up, Dan. And there's something about Mitzi. I can't really put my finger on it. But every now and then, even though she hasn't had any hits, she comes up with a line that is just absolutely brilliant. So after my little diva fit, we kind of sat by the piano. Mitzi, who was, uh, you know, had her hair dyed like 3,000 different colors, had holes in her jeans. Her jeans were barely the jeans because they were mostly just holes and tattoos in every conceivable part of her body. Uh, talking a mile a minute. So Keith, Mitzi, and I fell upon this idea of the classic disconnect between man and woman or husband and wife, of the distance where neither person was able to see the other person's point of view. And I always remember the line, you don't know what it feels to feel so small. You'd rather drive downtown than walk down the hall. Well, Mitzi wrote that line. And I always believed that without that line, the song wouldn't be a hit. And also, that line could only have been written by a woman. Then Keith and I, being sort of like the crafts writers that we are, came up with, so don't tell me what I'm feeling isn't real. You never touch me. So how would you know how I feel? But again, looking back at this, the whole experience, you know, I have to hand it to Keith. You know, he's, this is what makes Keith such an incredibly successful and enduring writer over three decades, is he's always thinking of new tricks, new things to throw all of us out of our comfort zones. Then what happened is I kind of sort of turned it into a duet and came up with these really cool duet parts, because that's one of my strengths, you know, is uh, vocal uh, arrangements, you know. Uh, and so that was the real fun part to me. That was not so much creative as it was physical. And when I sang How I Feel in the Studio with Liz Rodriguez, who's one of the greatest singers I've ever worked with, she sang her vocals first. And I thought, oh my God, she sings so well that I am going to have to sing my ass off or I'm going to look like a total doofus. I remember calling her in Toronto when I was in Nashville saying, Liz, the bar is pretty darn high here, but I'm going to do everything I can to match you. And uh, I, I think one of the things that makes this record such a powerful record is not just the song, but the record itself, the production. I think there's something very authentic and passionate about the vocals. And uh, I think that's the thing I'm proudest of when it comes to how I feel are the vocal performances of Liz and myself. Don't tell me what I'm feeling isn't real. You never touch me. So don't tell me how I feel.